you know, besides both these apps being Twitter, there's one important detail that I want to call out here. And that is, one of them was a web app. Once I removed the Chrome, you can sort of see that, where the left app was running entirely in Microsoft Edge. And the one on the right was a native app running on the, on the iPhone. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably like, this is another one of those talks where we talk about web versus native. Well, it's not. This is not one of those conversations. Instead, it's more about making your web apps just be more awesome, or more specifically, having a great user experience, or what the topic of this you know, talk is about, which is making your web apps truly be progressive. So the agenda is pretty light. You guys just came back from lunch, so I don't want to overwhelm you with way too many things. There's three ideas. What are progressive web apps? We're talking about going beyond the browser, and then just wrap things up by talking about whether a PWA even makes sense in the situation you're finding yourself in. So let's start with what are progressive web apps. At a high level, if I had to avoid any marketing terminology, they're just web apps. And web apps can be a game, it could be a website, it could be a book, it could be a newspaper, art project tool. It doesn't matter. It could be basically anything that you're building that happens to work in the browser and really go really well. So to dive deeper into what progressive web apps actually are, let's add a little bit more detail to it. So first of all, they start and run really fast. They're performant. They are responsive. They work across a variety of devices, screen sizes, and so on. And here's an example of the same Twitter app running on a smaller screen, expand to a bigger screen. You can sort of see how the app just kind of adapts to the various screen sizes that you have available. And so they also run over HTTPS. They're secure. They tend to be great in situations where your network connectivity is a little spotty. So they work offline and reliably under those situations. And they can also send push notifications. And I put an asterisk there because what this means is that your browser could be closed and a notification will still come in, just like you might see in, like with your text messaging and so on. So this is pretty cool, right? And the one thing to keep in mind is that there's no magical API that gives you all these capabilities. It's a collection. It's a, it's a buffet of features that kind of bring all these features to life. And we'll talk about some of them. So to build a PWA in the strictest terminology, you just need three things. First, you need a web app. That seems kind of obvious. And when we think of web app, we think of the HTML5 logo, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. But to go into a little bit more detail, you can also add a little bit more you build them in a variety of ways. You can use like, your favorite frameworks like React, jQuery, Angular. They're responsive. They work across all the major browsers. And the best thing about web apps is that they run on a variety of server-side technologies. Some of you have like PHP. Some of you just have static files. Doesn't matter. Just web apps are great in that sense. Second, and here we get to the point where you need technical details of a progressive web app. You need a web application manifest. So how many of you here have heard of the web application manifest before? <laughs> All right, a good number of you. So it's, this is good, because the way I like to describe them is this. For the longest time, we've been describing websites with like the title, meta tag, description, keywords. The web application manifest is kind of like the version 2.0 of that, where you provide more information about your app in terms of its title, splash screen icons, and things like that, and details which you'll see more when I talk about some of the applications of the web manifest in a little bit. But it's just a JSON file, contains metadata, but you have to have it for a progressive web app. And so the most important thing that would have manifest is that besides the data it provides, is that you're sending a signal. As a developer, you're telling whoever's listening, the user agent, your browser, or your device, that you want your web app to be more than just a web app. You want to have a life that maybe goes beyond it. And we'll look into what that beyond means. And the last thing, and this is probably the most technically complex piece of it, is a service worker. And so you know, at the, at a, you know, I can be very naive and say, it's just a JavaScript file. But really, that's kind of like saying that what you see there is just like the tip of the iceberg. It's actually a very complex piece of machinery that you end up having to do a fair amount of work in. And so here's a very simplified view of what they are. A service worker is just a proxy. And it kind of sits between your app and the network. And what it allows you to do by doing this is that you can create offline experiences. You can deal with caching pretty well. And you can also access push notifications and background sync APIs, which really helps solve two of the big five features we said progressive web apps tend to be really, really good at. 
And so here's the more technical description is that they allow to write JavaScript, but it runs in the background and allows to intercept all network requests, which means you can do all the cool things that you might want to do programmatically that you might not have been able to do otherwise in the past. And so with Service Worker, though, because it is a pretty big piece of technology, it's worth talk calling out dev browser support. So it's currently under development in Edge. And if you watched the build keynote a few weeks ago, we actually have it working under, under a flag. So you can enable it, start playing with it. Firefox and Chrome support it. And Safari is still working on it. And we hope that they will support it, support it soon. And, but the thing is, the thing about Edge is that I've been actually showing you Edge in all the screenshots. And here's like an example of a progressive web app. Vitaly showed you Smashing Magazine's next redesign like yesterday. And it actually works beautifully in Edge with all the cool optimizations they made to make it a progressive web app. So definitely worth giving it a shot. And here's also the Can I Use screenshot of it where you can see that support is pretty good on desktop. Mobile is still a work in progress. And Edge will be coming very, very soon. So, you know, when you see a chart like that, you're always like, oh, the technology seems cool. I want to use it, but what am I going to do? With, you know, I have people who use all these browsers where support is not existent. But the news is you can totally start to build a PWA even today. And because realistically, you could ask yourself, what is a PWA? It's just a regular web app. That's it. And it just happens to have some additional features that are kind of new. And this is a problem we've been dealing with for a very, very long time. You know, we've had features that certain browsers implement, certain browsers don't. It's, it's a prehistoric problem in the web terms. And so you know, the appropriate image of a ninja cat riding a T-Rex. And so the way we deal with it is two words, progressive enhancement, a word that you've seen many, many times for quite a while. And if you aren't familiar with it, the easiest definition is this. You provide a version that satisfies the largest addressable audience. So you layer on cooler functionality based on hardware, browser, and bandwidth capabilities. So, and the thing is, when you think about the web and the devices you're running on, it's not just your laptops, your mobile devices. It's actually broader. You have various variable devices that can access the internet. You have your television. You know, we bought a new TV recently, and it, for whatever reason, connects to the internet and has a browser in it. You know, it's bizarre. But you can imagine your progressive web app might want to run in those one day. And you know, Ali did a great job talking about the next billion devices in her talk yesterday. So you can imagine that if you had to like, draw a graph with a volume of devices out there, not everything is in the cutting edge spectrum. So if you are only targeting service worker related technology, you're probably missing out on a lot of devices on the, that might not benefit from it. So really, progressive enhancement is a way for you to build your progressive web app. And of course, the P, PWA stands for progressive after all. So it isn't the end of the world if a device you care about doesn't really support service workers or web application manifest or insert your favorite feature. You know, it's kind of, you just take it as granted because as web developers, we deal with the situation all the time. So the way I like to look at it is this. Technically, a progressive web app has to have a service worker and a manifest. But there's really more to an app being truly progressive because if I were to follow that guideline, this app right here is a fantastic progressive web app. It has a button, it has a service worker behind the scenes, and a manifest. But I would not consider this a good example of what you want to do with your, you know, with your time and your talents. You know, it's a progressive web app, but not a great one. So really, as developers and designers, as many of you are here, our goal should be to maximize user experience. And that's really what progressive web app is. And that goal isn't reached by just having a service worker and just having a manifest. And so this is an example of a technical demo that works, but it's not a great demo of what a user would want to experience. And some of the features you might care about that go beyond it are a lot of stuff that Sam Bellin talked about in his talk yesterday, the, the picture element, HTTP2, app cache intersection observers, all of these things that kind of come together to provide a great user experience beyond just making your network capabilities more resilient or giving extra metadata about your application. So let me pause for a second while you absorb that and give me a chance to take a drink of water. All right. So the thing is, just like within the web today, you have a lot of libraries, a lot of frameworks that make building and testing these things infinitely easier. And some of my favorite ones are Ionic. How many of you here use Ionic in your, in your jobs? OK, a handful of you. So Ionic is great. 
PW Builder. This is a project that we, you know, that my team at Microsoft with a few colleagues have built that allows you to provide a URL, and we help you create the manifest, create the icons, do all the more complex work that you might not really care about. And the nice thing is, depending on the framework you're using, React, Angular, it doesn't matter, there's a lot of starter packs that actually layer on progressive capabilities to your existing application as well. Here's an example of Create React PWA, which is actually a part of the you know, default create process now for React apps, which was integrated, I think, about a week ago. And of course, my favorite one is also you know, Lighthouse by Google, which doesn't help you build a PWA, but it gives you a quantifiable way of measuring how well or not well your site is actually running on a variety of metrics, not just the technical pieces, but how performant is it, how quickly does it show the first pixel on screen. A lot of valuable piece of data that you can use to provide a good user experience without having to just qualitatively just guess at the, at the result. So now let's shift a little bit. You know, we've been talking about PWAs and the experience they provide in the browser. But the, one of the things that PWS is interesting is that they have a life outside of the browser as well. It's pretty exciting. So one of the things I talked about is that their web apps that provide a great user experience. If we had to add just one more thing after it, it would be that they blur the line between web apps and native apps. And the way it's done is that you can add one more thing here. All those features still exist, but they provide better device integration. I'm going to show you two examples of what it means by that. So how many of you have an Android device? OK, a lot of you. And have you guys ever installed a PWA on it? All right, so that's just less of you. So it's going to be hopefully new material for a lot of you here. So if you're on an Android device and you have a PWA, so an, an example I like to use is Lyft.com. It's a very popular ride-hailing service in the, in the US. You can, when you visit a PWA on a device, you get a notification. Like it says, add to home screen. And once you click on that, what you get is an icon on your home screen, and, and as, the, as the label mentioned clearly. But the interesting part is the icon, the color of the icon, all these details, they came from the manifest you provided earlier. So there is a reason why you provided that. It is so when an agent, in this case the Android operating system, installs it, you can actually get something that's more personal, more custom to your brand. And this time, when you launch the app, notice that you don't see the browser Chrome anymore. You can, it's a specification you can specify in the manifest. And so in this case, Lyft chose not to provide any Chrome. So you get what actually looks like a native application. You know, your app will still work in the browser. That's a given. It just might do more when installed. And that's entirely up to you on what that more looks like. An example of in the video I showed you earlier was Twitter. You know, Twitter was very performant as a web app, also very performant as a native app. But some of the user gestures that people are familiar with, which is the, the home screen, their start bar, and all of that, you get to have your app live there, which is a pretty cool thing. And here's where I could talk a little bit about what we're doing in Windows, and more specifically, what I work on in my spare time when I'm not actually doing conference speeches. So what we're doing in Windows is this. We want every PWA to truly be a native application. So without doing any modification, your app will run in the browser. It'll also run very well as a native app. And what this really means is this. It'll be available in the store. So you can actually install these apps in the store like you would expect any other application you might want on your device. And second, by being a native app, you get instant access to all the various devices that Windows apps run on, your HoloLens, your desktops, of course, your Xbox, IoT devices, tablets, you name it, it'll run automatically on it. And the thing to emphasize, though, is that all of us, not just Google, not just Microsoft, not just Samsung or Firefox, we're all at the very early stages of figuring out what device integration fully means. So I'm saying expect to see some really cool stuff in the future. But what I do think is going to happen, definitely in the case for Microsoft and hopefully for everyone else, is that you know, the common question is, what do you need to do? You built a PWA, and the answer really is absolutely nothing. Because the thing is, you already built a web app. You already specified a manifest. You already told us that you want your app to do more than just live in the browser. It's really up to you know, browser vendors and operating system vendors like us to figure out how we interpret that signal and do some interesting things with it that you know, adds user value. So now we get to the part where you know, we talk, take a step back from the celebration of PWAs and talk about whether PWAs really make sense or not. So the thing to remember is this. PWA 
It's just a technology, except for people like us in this room. Our users don't really care. They don't spend time thinking about how their apps are built. They don't argue about tabs versus spaces. I'm a, I'm a tab person, by the way. You, know, you, can, you can exit the room if you disagree with me. And they also don't worry about all the details that go under the covers of these apps. So the way I like to think of it, you know, I like to frame this conversation in terms of user experience, where you have bad and good on one side, and developer experience, you know, the experience that you and I have, you know, good and bad, going up and down. And so if you were to plot it on a grid, this is how we tend to look at any project we evaluate. Let's ignore technology. Let's ignore all the, the details that goes into our day jobs. If you had to look at this, ideally, whatever you build, whatever you do, you want to be in the top right quadrant. You want to provide a great user experience, and you want to provide a good experience for you as a developer, your team of developers. And if you're really lucky, you get to be in the top right corner, which is fantastic, which means you don't want to be in the, the bottom left. You don't want to build like you know, something that makes users unhappy and makes you unhappy. You know, people have done it, and I won't mention any products that you know, we may have built at one point or another, but you know, it does exist. And so really, you want to make life better for your users. You also want to make life better for yourself, especially if you can. And so you know, here's how I like to think of it, is that you know, if you want to compromise, make user experience better. You, know, you can struggle with the poor developer experience, but definitely stay on the right-hand side of all of this. And this is where I come back with PWAs. They're actually a pretty awesome solution. You, know, you can build native apps. You can build any combination of apps. This whole view is technology agnostic. But PWAs, though, since I am a big fan of them, you know, they have some good things going for them. So they combine the best qualities of web with the best qualities of native apps. So I know a lot of presenters previously have been talking about their favorite TV shows and things growing up. This is a cartoon that I grew up watching called Cat Dog. And you know, uh, this is before the internet and cat memes and dog memes were really popular, but you know, it's a, it's a precursor to what we see today. You know, some, some people are cat people, some people are dog people. But Cat Dog combined the best of both worlds, just like a PWA combines the best of native with the best of the web. And so if I had to look at it from a user point of view, if I'm a user, what do I gain by building a PWA? Well, here are a handful of things. I get a URL bar, and that's actually very popular because we're so used to selecting a link, copying it, sharing it, tweeting it, and all of that, which you don't really get in other, other mediums. You're also guaranteed to the latest version of your content. You visit, let's say, google.com, you're going to see their home page with the latest image without having to update, download some updates, and all of that. And the third one's actually pretty important. Your content's available almost immediately. You know, imagine having to, let's take an example of an app that you might use natively. You probably went to the App Store, downloaded 50 megabytes, 100 megabytes, how many megabytes you wanted, before you could see even like probably a login screen. Well, in the, the browser case, in the PWA case, you just visit the website. It's available immediately. You don't have to go through the process of leaving the browser, installing, and especially in areas where data is very expensive, that is actually pretty cool. You get offline support and really smart caching, which we always attribute to a native application. With service workers, you get it in the web as well. You get an icon on the home screen, desktop, start menu, et cetera, which is just an, a way for people to feel familiar with how they use apps. You know, we are blurring the lines between what a web app is and a native app is. And you get push notifications, which is pretty cool, actually. You know, if you're on a website that happens to notify you that you have a task you haven't completed or it's a message you haven't responded to, it's nice to be notified of in a, in a way that makes sense on whatever device you are on. And of course, as a developer, you also get to maintain your existing web dev workflow. You know, a lot of us have our favorite text editors, our favorite command prompt, and all of these things. And we can still maintain that because we're still building just a web app. And you also have a great content update versioning story. There's no updating packages and sending them off to the store, waiting a week or so for approval, or you know, maybe a few days if you're lucky. It's instantaneous. So you have a faster time to market. You just build for the web. and because of web standards and web technologies. It works well on all devices. You have browser stack, which allows you to test on various platforms that you might not even have you know, easy access to. And another thing, you know, my favorite one really, is that you can reuse one code base for all the platforms you care about. You know, if you're desktop, mobile, Xbox, TV, you know, the full range of devices you care about, because PWA scale really well to low-end devices too, and high-end devices as well, you don't really have to have you know, multiple projects and multiple teams of people working on various parts of your 
of your code base. And so there are a lot of websites that actually track this. You know, one of my favorite ones is PWA Stats. And they actually give you a lot of data that goes beyond just user experience and developer experience on what makes PWAs really great, especially from a, from a business point of view. You can see how certain sites are able to increase sales because of push notifications, or how faster performance or being able to paint pixels to the screen really quickly has increased engagement, and a lot of good stuff. So I highly encourage you to check out pwastats.com in your, in your free time. And so with that, there's just about five things to, to keep in mind. You know, we're coming towards the tail end of, of our chat about PWAs. So the first thing is this. They're just web apps that just happen to deliver a great user experience. And you know, the six that I'd like to always you know, come back to is they're fast, they work on a variety of devices, they're secure, they are network resilient, they are re-engageable. Push notifications are a great example of that. And we're all working on various ways of having them do more on your device when you decide to add them, something more than just a bookmark or a bookmarklet that you might have used in the past. And so use progressive enhancement to start building them today for everyone, everyone being the key part. One of the things that my team does you know, is very closely watch the number of sites that are becoming PWAs. And so if you were to build a PWA today, you wouldn't really be alone. We're seeing a strong uptrend in number of manifests that are currently going online. And we're using both Bing and Built with Data to find this. But you know, data is still pretty early. But the trend is pretty promising. Many, many sites are adopting PWAs, and especially the parts of technology that make more sense to them. And second, or third in this case, yeah, count as zero-based counting or one-based counting, yeah, I forget. Your PWAs do great work inside your browser, but they also have the ability to thrive outside of it as well. And this is an area where we'll be working with a lot of you to figure out what makes sense and what APIs are needed and so on. So I expect to see a lot more communication on this going on. And the fourth item, sometimes a PWA is the right solution. Sometimes it isn't, and that's OK. Just do the right thing for your users. And if you can, do the right. don't forget about yourself. Make life easy for you as well. And the last and most important part of it is just have fun. You know, a lot of us have been doing web development for a very, very long time. And we've seen things come and go. We've seen things that are great, some things that aren't great. But at the end of the day, when you zoom really far out into what we were doing, if you're not having fun, it's really you know, just not all that great. So with that, my name is Karupa. You can Find me on Twitter, and I'll be at the booth with Yosef and talking about Bash on Windows and also like Edge, PWAs, all the stuff that we as a, a web platform team at Microsoft work on. So you can come find me there as well. All right, thank you.